Working with Microsoft 365 apps can be a real challenge when it comes to working with your team or even on a project. Which app does what? How do the apps all work together and have that seamless experience? It can often feel like Microsoft doesn't give us the answers right. But today, on the back of a question that one of our subscribers asked in one of our earlier videos, we're going to be tackling the all important question. How can you work with Microsoft 365 apps, either working in your team or on a project, in a collaborative way, going right from the start? Yes, we're going to be looking at Teams as a collaborative hub to bring everything together, including task management, file sharing, and more. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have greater confidence to use Microsoft 365 and the apps in much better ways. And of course, if you like this video, hit the all important subscribe button and the like button. So let's dive into Microsoft 365 and get started. So when it comes to collaborating with your team, we need a place to be able to store all of your content. And that is inside of Microsoft Teams. We can build out a brand new Microsoft Team as your collaborative hub for your team or one of your projects. Now you may be thinking, well, Scott, can't we use a SharePoint site to do that? We absolutely could, but Microsoft Teams provides better capability with posts and channels and more to make that more of a collaborative hub than what we usually see inside of a standard SharePoint site with just file sharing. So how to do that in Teams is pretty straightforward. Assuming you've got access to create a new team, go into the Teams app and select the plus icon from the top, then select create team. Now here, you can give your team a name Again, it could be a project or a team that you're working within. You can define a team name and give it a description to suit. Now in the team, we also need to define what's the security you're going to employ. Will it be private or will it be public? Well, I'm gonna make it a private team that only certain people in the organization can have access to because they're gonna be collaborating on our spring collection. Let's go ahead and continue to mark this as private. And in a new change to Microsoft Teams, we no longer get the first channel called General. No, you can now define the name. Let's go ahead and add in our channel name. It'll be the first to appear in our Microsoft Team. With our team now set, let's go ahead and click on the Create button and Microsoft Teams will do the rest. And when your team is now created, you can also now begin bringing in your team members. Yes, you can do this later, but I find it really helps bringing them in nice and early to begin to build out the workspace to make it suit your own needs. Let's go ahead and add in a couple of colleagues by left clicking into type name or an email and simply select them in the drop down that appears. And now we've selected three people to join our team, let's also ensure that we promote another one of our team members to become an owner of the team. Now why is that? That ensures that if I go on annual leave or I'm not in the office, the other owner can also maintain security and the settings in the Microsoft Teams, ensuring someone else can pick up all of that additional work. Well, let's go ahead and promote Matthew and make Matthew and also an owner of our Spring Collection team. Both Megan and Alex remain as members, meaning they don't have access to control security and some of the other important settings. Let's go ahead and click Add. Now Teams will create that brand new team and also add all of those relevant people into the security. We can even see that our first channel has now been created for general discussions. But we also like to do in your collaborative working area is build out other channels to help your team collaborate in better ways. To do that, go across to the freed up menu on your team name and simply select add channel and begin to add in your channel names. For the security, i.e. the channel type, I'll leave it set as standard so everyone on my team will have access to all of these channels. So we now have four channels in the left-hand side of our team. Campaign timeline, general discussions, marketing assets, and team discussions, allowing the team to step into any of these and begin to start a post and have communications working as a team and take them outside of email. But also let's consider another topic, task management. Because in the spring collection, we also need to have some tasks defined to the project team. Is there an easier way than doing that inside of Outlook or even apps like Microsoft Excel? And that's where you can handily use Microsoft Planner. So I'll go to the top of the team here inside of this channel and click on the plus icon to add a tab. Now selecting Planner, and now I can give this tab a name. 
Now let's go ahead and add something to do with our campaign timeline. So I can now go ahead and call this a Spring Collection 2025 campaign. I also will uncheck the box to send a message about this new tab and then go ahead and click on save. This will now create a new Microsoft Planner plan inside of our Microsoft team for the Spring Collection. The security is also shared with your colleagues. But how now can we best organize your tasks? Well, that's entirely up to you. There's a couple of ways we normally see this working within Teams. This would be, firstly, you could consider your buckets, this one called To Do. You could consider these to actually be phases in your project, such as phases in our spring campaign. Alternatively, they could even be resource names you want to allocate tasks to given people in a specific bucket to provide quick allocation and review. The good news is that Planner does not discriminate against either option. They both work entirely the same. So I'm going to go ahead and use the approach we normally see by adding phases of our campaign into our Microsoft plan. With our buckets now added, which we have four of them here, we can also now begin to allocate tasks. Let's go ahead and add a task under design and branding. With our task name defined and also due date, you'll notice when we click on the assign button, we can now assign people inside of the team. Yes, the people we added earlier can now have tasks assigned to them. Let's go ahead and allocate this to Alex and simply click on add task. In doing so, we can left click in the task and add further detail, such as the progress, the priority, start dates, and even checklists of activities, ensuring your planning is now more formal than what it was previously. But let's go ahead and add a few more tasks into our plan to get started with our spring campaign. So with our tasks now added into our plan, you'll also see inside of the Spring Collection team, we look at a grid of these tasks, even have a schedule view from our calendar, or alternatively see a range of different charts you can filter through. And of course, we've covered other videos on our channel to show how these capabilities work in Microsoft Planner. Working in Microsoft 365 can be challenging, but if you need help outside of this tutorial, why not check out a whole range of free eBooks we've published over on our Your365 Coach website, link below. Yes, you can take advantage of eBooks covering Microsoft 365, task management, Copilot, and more. All available, completely free of charge, you can download today. Head to the web link below to find out more. So let's head back into Microsoft 365 and make things more simple. But in addition, tasks aren't always created in this way. You may not always go into the board view and click on add task. They can also be fairly organic, such as posts and more. Well, let's head into our post section on our campaign timeline and start a post. And in this post, I'm simply gonna ask the team that we need to schedule a marketing photo shoot for next week. So I'm a member of the team able to review this and work out who's best to pick this up. And a few minutes later, Alex has decided he can pick this task up. Thanks a lot, Alex. What we can actually do now though, is not only track this as a post in our channel, we can also convert it into a task inside a Microsoft Planner, allowing Planner to do all the hard work in chasing Alex up to get this work done. So all we need to do is hover over the message, click the free dot menu and select Create Planner Task. And under the drop down for creating, we can now select the spring collection. We can change the bucket to our events and PR and we can now click on the assign button in the top left and also select Alex's name. And of course, setting a due date, it's gonna be done by the end of this week. We can then click on add task here and it'll be automatically added into our Microsoft Planner. But the good news is that task is now showing as a reply that Alex can also see and interact with. Alex is now aware that this task exists in our Microsoft Planner plan. But often we need to collaborate on content and that's where Microsoft Loop can really help inside of our spring campaign. I need to work on a marketing statement and have the whole team also input into that statement. So inside of our Microsoft team, I'm gonna go ahead and click on start a post under our marketing assets channel. And here I'm gonna go and select the Microsoft Loop icon at the bottom of my post. This now will create us a piece of Microsoft Loop content allowing me and the team to also make changes in place and keep it all in sync. Yes, no more sending versions around the team, getting it all out of sync. So let's go ahead and paste in our marketing campaign wording. 
And once that's done here, I'll also give it a title too. With our title updated and also adding a short message tagging in the whole team, I'm now ready to go. But also let's consider the security of this loot content. Here you'll see it states people with existing access can use a link. That actually is not correct. I want to share this with our whole team. So by left clicking, I can now select the link settings to give access to only product launch spring collection 2025. In other words, our collaborative team. And I'll also give them edit rights, but I could change this to read only as well. By clicking apply, I look at the security of the loop content. And I'll simply click on post to post it into our Microsoft team, allowing my colleagues to also make changes to it too. And within a few minutes, we can now see that Alex is beginning to update this content in place. He's already changed the font and also he's highlighted some content here in red. And that's how easy we can use Microsoft Loop and Loop components in your collaborative team to keep everything in sync that you can share with your stakeholders later. And of course, as you're working as a team, we also need to track annual leave requests, who's on leave and when. We can also have a dedicated section inside of your collaborative team to do exactly that with the help of Microsoft Lists. To do that, we're gonna go into our channel for team discussions and go to the top and select add a tab. Now typing in the word list to find the Microsoft Lists app. By left clicking, you'll now see lists loads here. I'll go ahead and click on save. We can create a brand new list. So we're gonna go ahead and create a brand new list. Microsoft also provides templates as we can see here for a variety of different scenarios. But let's go ahead and create our own very simple list to track leave. To do that, select blank list and I'll give it a name called annual leave tracker. We can also give it a color and different icons and select on the create button. This now will create a brand new Microsoft list that your team have access to. It doesn't look much like an annual leave tracker. So let's go ahead and make a few changes. Very simply in list, we can go to add column. We can choose a type of column, such as a person here. Select next on the right hand side, give it a name. Let's go ahead and add the staff name. With that done, we'll go ahead and click on save. And we now have a new column for staff name. It would also be good though to track when they want this annual leave. So again, add column. Now select date and time and select next. And I very simply called this annual leave date. We can also include the time, but it's not required for this particular scenario. And we can also use a friendly format to make it also more friendly on the eye. Let's go ahead and click on save. Now we continue this principle by adding more columns to customize this Microsoft list. And with our columns now completed, any of your team members can simply click on add new item and begin to fill in this to as a capture their annual leave dates you can also build workflows and more from. So another great capability to use in your collaborative team for our spring collection. And last but not least, let's consider where you can store all of your files to make sure you and your team can quickly access them later. Here I am inside a Microsoft Word creating a project proposal for the spring collection, but currently it's not saved anywhere or it may even be saved on my local computer, which of course I don't want. So inside a Microsoft Word, we can go to File, select Save As, and then we can see on the left hand side, we can already see Project Launch for Spring Collection is showing. Alternatively, you can click on Show More and also access any of your other existing teams. So let's go ahead and save it under our team discussions and give it the relevant name. With that done, click on save and your file will now be saved directly into the Microsoft team that we've got for the spring collection. To check that out, let's head back into teams, select files under team discussions and here is our project proposal nicely stored in our Microsoft team that you and your colleagues have access to. But even better, let's go back into teams and also show you a way that we can announce this file has been added and also ask for additional feedback. To do that, head into the posts area, start a new post, and once you define your post, head down to the plus icon and select attach file. At this point, select browse teams and channels, and here now you'll be able to access all of your existing Microsoft Teams, including the project proposal we've just added. Go ahead and select attach in the bottom, and you'll now see the project proposal is here, and we'll simply select post. 
that the magic of Teams means this has actually been shared as a sharing link. It has not been shared as a brand new attachment. We can easily see that by left clicking into this file. I'll open it directly back into Microsoft Word. But the file is exactly the same one that we have in Microsoft Teams. It's simply shared as a sharing link, ensuring that you and your team can collaborate on one single version of the file. So now we've got a collaboration space for our upcoming spring campaign. But for you, it could look very differently. Remember that Microsoft Teams can be used for teams as well as projects, work initiatives and more. And then you can bolt on the capabilities that you need, whether that's file sharing, task management, or even SharePoint or Microsoft Lists to give you better capability for capturing data. There's a whole wide range of possibilities, but hopefully this tutorial will help you on that journey in creating the space that works for you and your team. And if it does, well, I'd love for you to hit that like button and the subscribe button, or even better, let me know in the comments because your comments can also be turned into videos just like this one today. Otherwise, well, I look forward to seeing you in the next one.